Our next speaker is Evgenia Poletta with a speech entitled Too Much Information. Too Much Information by Evgenia Poletta. I hope that people who are, get scared by things left during the previous speech. Because today I'm not going to make fun as I, and make jokes like I usually do. I'm, I'm here with a very serious presentation, and I'm going to speak about one of the biggest dangers of our time, information overload. Ladies and gentlemen, we live in an information age. Do you know that in the last 30 years, humanity produced more information than in the previous 5,000 years? And did you know that every year there is enough scientific information written for a person to read day and night for 460 years. And without even being so nerdy, some of the latest generations of iPod have a capacity to store 40,000 songs, which is about 3,000 albums, which is 2,333 uh, hours, and that is about 97 days of your life without sleeping. 97 <laughs> days just to listen to them. I, I think that's enough information for you today. Just to <laughs> you're, you're getting my point. We are uh, bombarded with information all the time. I work as a policy advisor. And at my work, I get emails all day long, email, long emails containing like reports, researches, papers, just people writing long emails in general. I, I have a special folder in my mailbox. I'm not sure if any of you do the same. I, I, I call it to read later. <laughs> it's like, I guess like it, if it was a real mailbox, it would be covered with a spider and nets uh, all over the place. The, I think like there's so many emails and things written there that is worth about 100 Tolstoy's War and Peace. I don't know when I'm going to read it. So if any of you are sending an email longer than two paragraphs, it's probably <laughs> that box. And I'm just trying to pull the time and until you forget about it. And I don't think I'm going to respond. And in fact, some of my friends, they're developing a new email system. So this each email you send, you have to pay a dollar, <laughs> which is not a big money, but you will have to think twice. <laughs> I, I was wondering, do we actually need so much information? You know, like uh, the various researchers that say, the more information we get, the harder it is to comprehend, and that the managers who get a lot of information, it actually they make worse decisions. And too much information is also a reason why I'm still not married. It's because the more I learn about the God, the less I like it. <laughs> I, I, was, I always come with the idea that you have to, of course, sort information. Because you still need some. And the information is still of a great value. So you have to sort and see what is useful, what is not. And there's one story, a real life story, that helps me to, uh, to deal with it. There was one, two men in a boat, on a like, sailing boat. One is a scientist. I, I don't remember who he was, but let's say he's a mathematician. <laughs> and the other guy is a, just a sailor who was rowing the boat. So they have a, you know, they are rowing the, on the boat and they have a small conversation. And the mathematician asks the guy, do you know anything about math? <coughs> the sailor says, well, unfortunately, no. The mathematician says, well, unfortunately, you have, I, I feel like you have lost half of your life. Mm. <laughs> moment of silence, you know, they have nothing to talk about anymore. And they keep rowing on the boat, and then there is a hole in, in the boat, and the water starts coming, and they are sinking, they're not thinking, they're sinking. <laughs> <laughs> the sailor is asking the guy, do you know how to swim? The guy says, no. He says, well, unfortunately, you have lost your life. <laughs> it is as simple as that, but you have to be in that sinking boat to know what to know. I was, I, was, I was wondering how to really cope with so much information. And you know, I was thinking, we have this friend of ours, evolution. If we have to deal with so much more information on a daily basis, 
our brain will have to be developed to be so efficient with dealing with chunks and tons of information. Well, it is true to a certain extent, but not totally, because people sometimes develop what is called um, IFS, information fatigue syndrome. And nowadays, even the attention lab is much smaller than what we, we, used to, we used to be before. For example, you know Twitter, it's a brilliant thing. It shows really how much information we can comprehend. It is 140 syllables, so about three lines of text. That is, a, that is as much as we can willingly comprehend and follow. Another thing is, the more information we get, we, we get to be dependent on it. We need, we need to get news all the time, all the time in our life. I have a friend, he is addicted to BBC website. He is reading news like day and night. I'm, I'm sure some of you do as well. And the problem with this is, as you read it, more things keep happening around the world at the same time you read it. So you never can catch up. I was thinking, what's the point of reading it at all? And I, I made a very radical decision, and I'm, I'm, uh, maybe some of you will be shocked. I stopped reading and watching news at all. <laughs> you may think, like some people say, it's been not professional, and it's like being sad and not civilized. I think it actually makes my life so much easier. <laughs> because if something really important happens, everyone is going to be talking about it. And trust me. You don't have to watch the video of the wave crashing the Japanese houses to really get an idea. <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not telling you not to stop watching the news. You have to decide what to do. I made a small list for you of uh, all the things you can do. Uh, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> yeah, my time is running out. Uh, uh, I guess um, it's a long list. Um, <laughs> Uh, the time is really ticking. Actually, <laughs> oh, whatever. So whatever works best for you, works best. Let's just say enough to too much information. Yeah. <laughs>